Here we, we are with uh, Professor Rama Krishna, and I just heard a, uh, the very inspiring speech you just delivered, and that is so powerful. So, how long you've been preparing for today's speech? You know, I've been doing this for a long time. So, I basically a little bit last night and this morning. But the work that that I do, we've been doing this for five years, mm. and so each time. You know, we improve on what we do. We're constantly trying to improve. So I run this site called AAPI Data, mm -hmm. Asian American Pacific Islander mm -hmm. Data dot com, mm -hmm. and um, I talk with reporters, with public officials, with community organizations all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to really translate the data, mm -hmm. try to make meaning out of the data, mm -hmm. right? So it's how not do just you, numbers. Yes, it's just numbers. I I see that data, and how do you transform this data and uh, make that meaningful? So we think it's important to transform it into stories, right? And so use the data. So if you see data, like for example, most people don't know that uh, the majority of Asians are immigrants. Mm -hmm. And so if you're trying to understand the Asian American community, you have to understand immigration. Mm -hmm. Asians are the only major racial group that is majority immigrant. When many people think immigrants, they think Latino. But in fact, when they should be thinking about immigrants, they should be thinking about Asian Americans. So you've been talking to so many people, like journalists, and most people think that uh, immigrants are Latino. And how does this happen? Why is that? You know, it's, a lot of it is because of the way politicians talk about immigration. Right? So we talk about the wall, or we talk about illegal immigration. Well, even on illegal immigration, by the way, there's a, it's a big issue within our community. But in, since 2008, so for 10 years now, there's been more immigration coming from Asia than from Latin America. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that's new. Mm -hmm. But the politicians, you know, they're trying to win votes. Mm -hmm. And so for them, the reality does not matter as much. Mm -hmm. News media cover the politicians. Yes. And they need to actually cover the reality more than the politicians. Mm -hmm. So we want to cover the reality more yeah. than the politicians. So why do you, you think that our voice have been, has been ignored? Part of the reason is because Asian Americans are not civically engaged. Um, and what that means is not just voting, talking to public officials, but also getting involved. So when it comes to volunteering, we care about education so much. There's all of this news attention about Harvard and affirmative action. Well, a very, very small part of the population gets into Harvard, right? Even with or without affirmative action. But guess what? We care about our public schools, where our children go to elementary school, high school. We care about um, college debt. We care about affordable health care, especially if we have pre-existing conditions. That's we, what I heard. That's yeah. what I heard all the time. So what are the real issues? So big issues in the Asian American community. Health care, affordable health care. Um, education, making sure that people don't have big college debt mm -hmm. and that education is affordable. Um, of course, things like a strong economy and good jobs, those things matter. Gun control. Asian Americans, including Chinese Americans, are strong supporters of gun control. And this is a constant issue in our country. Environmental protection. Right? We want clean air, clean water. We have strong environmental values. So these are the issues. We need to tell ourselves this because that is what we believe, but a lot of times because the media thinks, oh, Asians, the only thing they care about is immigration, mm -hmm. right? Or the only thing they care about is make sure that they have more representation in Hollywood. Yes, those things matter, mm -hmm. but environment matters to us, gun control matters to us, mm -hmm. affordable education, affordable health care, all of these things matter. I think that issue you talking about are really for the majority uh, yes. immigrants and why their voice hasn't been heard. You know, it's... Um, in a lot of Asian cultures, we've been taught to just do our work, be quiet, um, don't cause controversy. Mm -hmm. What ends up happening is some immigrants actually don't obey those rules and they get very loud. Mm -hmm. And then they end up speaking for the entire community. Mm -hmm. So what you have is a big Asian immigrant population mm -hmm. that is not speaking up. And then everyone thinks, oh, this is what Chinese immigrants care about because you have this very loud group here mm -hmm. Everyone must care about that. I think there's a bit of intimidation, too. Mm -hmm. What I've seen is on WeChat, for example, mm -hmm. someone expresses an opinion that might be different, mm -hmm. and then, the, you know, yeah, other people, people yes. attack them. Yes, exactly. They, they attack them, uh, especially to 2016's uh, election. Yes. yes.
Yeah. Yes. So actually, you learn about WeChat. So you being really know about Chinese the community, right? I'm trying to learn as much as I can. You know, I don't I don't uh, speak Mandarin or be able to read uh, Chinese, but I think it's so. We've been trying to tell if anyone serves Asian American, especially Chinese American communities, we're telling groups like OCA, but even other Asian American groups, you have to be in WeChat world because that's that's where Chinese immigrants are. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a, a, a public account or if you don't have ways of getting mm -hmm. engaged in WeChat, you're just not gonna be seen as credible, mm -hmm. right? And so, I mean, in fact, there's some local governments in San Gabriel Valley, mm -hmm. they have these WeChat accounts and they get more requests for information mm -hmm. through that than on Twitter or Facebook mm -hmm. because they have big Chinese immigrant populations. So mm -hmm. WeChat, I think for a long time, Many of these uh, leaders, you know, they don't, they're not, they don't speak Mandarin. Mm -hmm. You know, they can't communicate that well. Well, they should hire people who do that, yes. um, mm -hmm. or hire consultants who can do that. Mm -hmm. um, the way I talk about it is, if you're an Asian American organization that doesn't have a WeChat presence, it would be like an organization in 2000 that didn't have a website. You know, that's, that's it's a that good limiting. One. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I agree with that. And uh, you know, many of the Asian people have the, you know, oh, I, I would say mainstream have the impression for the wrong impression for the Asian people. Uh, we just watched the very popular movie, mm -hmm. uh, crazy, oh, crazy, rich crazy, yeah, yeah, crazy rich Asians. So, uh, why people don't get the, you know, I would say, it shouldn't be the see the wrong impression. I would say that. That's uh, not a typical impression. Perfect. So you are working with so many Asian people, and what's your impression for the Asian people? For us, it is so important for the data and the reality, mm -hmm. you know, to inform the conversation. So, mm -hmm. yes, there are a lot of—I mm -hmm. don't know if they're crazy, but at least there are a lot of wealthy, rich Asians mm -hmm. in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But there's also a lot of poverty, and it's not just poverty, say, among the Vietnamese population or Cambodians. In New York City, Chinese poverty is among the highest mm -hmm. in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of uh, Chinese immigrants that face housing problems or access to health care. So, you know, if you're a Chinese immigrant who care, say, if you care about Asian Americans, then care about Vietnamese and other groups too. But if you say, you know what, I only care about Chinese, well, care about the Chinese who are not doing well. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, that's another thing I would say is we have so much wealth within our community mm -hmm. let's do it to improve our community mm -hmm. you know of course we have to take care of our family mm -hmm. that's strong that i mean i have i have kids i want to make sure that i provide for my kids mm -hmm. but let's think about going beyond that mm -hmm. well talking about the wealthy and uh, successful people especially asians and uh, how do you define the real success so this is a big uh, part of what we're trying to do is Many people have a notion of success where, you know, I need to get a good job or make a lot of money, have a nice house. All of these things, of course, they matter. But if you want to be respected in this country, if you want to be seen as someone who has something important to say, you need to volunteer. You need to get involved in philanthropy, right? And so get involved in community organizations. You need to be seen as a leader, not only in the Asian community, but just as a leader. And that means, you know, get involved in different types of organizations and start getting involved. So philanthropy, a lot of people think it's about get, giving money. A lot of it is also just about giving your time and what they say, talent, right? So they say time, talent, and treasure, right? You need to give your time. If you happen to be someone who's good in accounting, help a nonprofit organization in terms of its bookkeeping, right? Or go to these galas. I mean, a lot of Asians, they feel, oh, I don't know if I can go to these. I, you know, I don't want to schmooze. I don't want to be too political. Well, then they, guess they don't feel They don't feel they belong to that. Right. Mm -hmm. But we have to take risks. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times in Asian cultures, people think, oh, I, you know, I want to have the certainty. I want to become a doctor. I want to become an engineer. I want to become an accountant because I know it'll be a good job. Mm -hmm. Steady income. Well, even if that's the case, let's remember there's a lot of entrepreneurial spirit mm -hmm. in China and in India. Mm -hmm. We know how to take risks. We're just not taking it. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it also means, okay, many of us, many Asian immigrants have strong accents. Mm -hmm. Well, join the Toastmasters Club. Mm -hmm. 
There are Toastmasters clubs throughout the country. Improve your public speaking. And then just get out there. In the beginning, you may be embarrassed or shy, but over time, you will get better at what you do, and you will build a very supportive network. Mm, I think that immigrants coming to the United States is taking the risk. It's yes, really taking absolutely. the risk. Yeah, they're taking the That's risk. Right. That's one of the biggest risks you can do, mm -hmm. is to go around the world and start a new life. Mm -hmm. Then why not continue taking risks, you know? Um, we need to do that. Very good point on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you see in the next five or next even twenty years? This uh, because I've been I know that you've been working hard to collecting data and making changes. So, what do you wish that the future would be? You know, I think we need to see a lot more Asian Americans running for office, right? So we have John Chung who ran for office this year. He didn't do as well, but we shouldn't be discouraged. There are more and more people who should be running for all kinds of offices. I think especially in a state like California, but even in the country, we need to have Asian Americans seen as leaders in philanthropy. I'm on the board of a very big foundation. There aren't that many Asians on these foundation boards. We need to have that. We also need to have Asian Americans who, let's look at Crazy Rich Asians. It was a big success. Let's try to take that success and do it when it comes to other kinds of community contributions. Because we don't want people to think one of the problems, I think, is if people see Asians as successful, mm -hmm. but they think we're selfish or that we're insular, we keep to ourselves, mm -hmm. that's not going to be good. It's not going to help us. Mm -hmm. In fact, what it does in American society, people get resentful because mm -hmm. they say you're too successful and you don't care about us. Yes. What have you done for, the, for our community? Exactly. Yes. So I think at the very least, mm -hmm. if we want to avoid the troubles, because we think, oh, we're smart. We're wealthy, therefore people will like us. We pay taxes. It's like, no, we have to be involved in society. In fact, Steve Bannon, who used to be an advisor to, uh, to the president, he pushed back against Trump because Trump had said, you know what, there are a lot of Asians that have good college degrees that maybe we should let them stay. And Steve Bannon said, you know, we are more than an economy. We're a society. And these Asian immigrants are not contributing to society. We should be very careful mm -hmm. in thinking that just economic success is going to do it. So we have to mm -hmm. be involved in society in a much deeper way than we are. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm hopeful for. Yeah, I think that the true value for a person is your contribution. What yeah. you can contribute to this society. And not just money, yes. right? Give your time, give your talent, mentor people, help people.